Well, this morning we are going to continue our sermon series on 12 spiritual disciplines that will uh, help you in your faith and that are important for, uh, for the body of believers and for all of us. We've talked about a lot of spiritual disciplines uh, so far, and today we're going to talk about disciple-making, the discipline of disciple-making. And you may wonder, well, why do I have to do that? And and how would I do that? And that's perfect because that is exactly what we are going to talk about today. So let's take a moment and uh, pray and ask for God's, uh, God's revealing of uh, what he wants us to hear in, uh, in the sermon today. Father in heaven, please uh, illuminate our hearts and minds through the power of your spirit that we may hear uh, what you would have us hear in the message today and in your scriptures most of all. Lord, we pray for this guidance um, not only today but throughout our week as we dive into your scriptures in our own personal devotions as well. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, the first question we ask ourselves, of course, is, uh, as we have been with all of these spiritual disciplines, why? Why make disciples? Well, there are a whole bunch of reasons for that. Uh, One is because that's what Jesus did, and Jesus was the perfect example of what it means to be a human being, what, what we are all called to be. This is what we read in Luke chapter 19, verse 10. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. And essentially, that's what it is to make disciples, is to give them the good news of Jesus Christ. But not only to give them that good news, which saves their souls, but also to help them to live into that truth, to become what we are always meant to be. It's not only what Jesus himself did, but it's also what Jesus taught us to do. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 19, when Jesus is calling his disciples, he says, Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. That is what Jesus taught his disciples to do over the next uh, three years or so of his earthly ministry, and it is what he called all of us to do. We, we know this because not only did Jesus teach his disciples to do it, but then he also commanded his disciples to go and do it again and again and again so that all people would become disciples of Jesus. This is what we read in Matthew chapter 28 verses 19 and 20 and this is this is called the great commission. And it's called the great commission not because it is a commission of professionals of people uh, only a select people, but it is a great commission because Jesus commands his disciples to make di- disciples of all nations. This is what it says, Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 to 20. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age." There's some really important clues in there as to our calling, but also as to how to do that. Uh, Jesus says, make disciples and teach them, right? This is how we make disciples, but we'll get to that in just a few moments. Also in Mark chapter 16, verse 15, we read Jesus saying to his disciples, he said to them, Mark 16, 15 says, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Not only do we have the command of Jesus and the example of Jesus, and not only do we see that Jesus taught his disciples to make more disciples, but also the early disciples, they modeled that. Right? In Acts chapter 5, verse 42, we read, 
day after day in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. This is what the disciples did. They heard the call of Jesus to make disciples, and they felt it in their very bones through the power of the Holy Spirit living in their lives. And it is not a, a call only to certain select individuals, professionals like pastors or, or missionaries or seminary professors or whatever. It is a call to all disciples, to all Christ followers. Now, that brings up the, the potentially very intimidating question, how do we make disciples? We hear all kinds of things in the world about, uh, about how one is to evangelize and how one is to share the gospel. And, and it can leave us feeling like, oh, I can't do that. That is something beyond me and something that I need to leave to people who know better than I do. We see that with with all kinds of things. The, the way that we support missionaries, which which I'm not telling us we need to stop, but it's it's part of an idea of sending out the professional somewhere else, and we support them to share the gospel with someone else. We see that in people who uh, who desire to bring their friends to church, which again there is nothing wrong with that. That's great. But if it is a thing where you are wanting to bring your friend to church, hoping that the pastor will share the gospel with them so that you don't have to, then, then maybe there's something wrong there. How do we make disciples? Well, the truth is, is that you don't have to have all the answers. You don't have to be an encyclopedia of biblical knowledge. You don't have to have all the apologetic arguments. All you have to do is teach in the way that probably you've been teaching, even if you didn't know it, for your whole life. We teach. This is what Matthew 28, verse 20 says. And, and just as a reminder, we read this a little bit earlier. Jesus is saying to the disciples, he's giving them the Great Commission, and he says, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Obviously, we see in there the command to teach people, but also we see in there the comfort that Jesus is with us. We're not in it alone. We are not here trying to figure out how to teach the gospel, how to teach, uh, how, how to teach people how to be disciples all on our own. Jesus is with us. The Holy Spirit is living within us. It is good to hear how to teach, though, to, to have that drawn out in the open. The stuff that, that we've been doing, it's good to recognize we've been doing it and, and to be conscious of it and to help, uh, to help us know how to do it more. So in order to answer the question, how do we teach, we need to understand what it truly means to know something. And we've talked about this before, uh, but knowing something, in order to really know something, a person needs to really understand it and remember it in their minds. They need to retain it in their minds. It needs to be there and be something that, that, that they really conceptually get and that they can hold on to. They need to not only understand it and remember it in their minds, but they need to also have the knowledge reside in and, and fill up their hearts. Right? If you know something in your head, but it doesn't touch your heart, then your knowledge is not complete. And furthermore, your knowledge is not complete, not only if you, you don't have it in your heart, but also your knowledge is not complete if you don't act on that knowledge. The knowledge that you have in your head and hopefully in your heart as well needs to make a difference in the way you live. 
You need to understand in your head and have it reside in your heart. And you need to act on that knowledge. So, in other words, if that is what we need in order to know, then to teach a person so that they can know, like that, we need to follow uh, the teaching square. And, and this this sounds um, perhaps a little odd, but the reality is is that we do the teaching square um, in lots of different contexts. Now, I'm taking this from Mike Breen's book, Building a Discipling Culture, where it's called a leadership square. But that implies that somehow you need to be a leader in order to be able to lead others. And, and uh, it could be argued, but today I wanted to make it clear that, that this is something that anyone can do and everyone does do at some point in our lives. Basically, the teaching square, as I'm, as I'm talking about it, fits this model. If you imagine yourself and someone else, another person, going around the teaching square, and you are the person who has the knowledge, then <clears throat> you start off with, you know, I do it, and you watch, right? So you're teaching someone how to fix a tractor, right? You do the thing, and the person watches. The person that you are teaching watches, right? And, and then, you know, you move on on the next stage, on the other side of the square. I do, and you help, right? You involve the person. You get them in there. You get them doing things, right? And then once they have experienced enough, you, you get them to do it. You do it, and I'll help, right? You fix the tractor, and I'll guide you a little bit and help you and, and stuff like this. And ultimately, hopefully, you get to the place where they do it, and, and you just watch. You do the thing, I watch, and see how things are going. And, and doing that... Right? which you've probably already done in all kinds of different areas of your life. Doing that, you teach somebody. And it's no different with the gospel. Right? I live out love to other people. I, let's say, volunteer at the food bank. Right? And somebody else is, is thinking, you know, I want to contribute to, to our, our world. I want to help out those who are in need. Well, okay, come on. Come on to the food bank, and, and I'll show you what we do. And, and then, you know, we move on. I do it, you help. You do it, I help. And then you do it, and I watch. Basically, in order to make disciples, we must do these things, and it's pretty simple. We need to talk about our faith, talk about Jesus in our lives, talk about who God is and who we are in relationship with him, talk about the gospel, not have all the answers, just talk about it. And we need to love, love God love each other, and love those who do not know him yet, and do. Talk, love, and do with other Christ followers. When we talk, love, and do, then we will be making disciples, especially if we follow through with this teaching square. Do our talking and loving and doing in this basic model. It is just like how Jesus talked to the people among whom he lived. His disciples, all the crowds that came to see him, the lepers, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the teachers of the law, all the people who came to him, he talked to them, and he loved them, and he did the will of God among them. Brothers and sisters, that is the spiritual discipline of making disciples. And this is something that is not for the professionals alone. This is something that is not rocket science 
as they say. This is something that every one of us already does in so many different ways in our lives. And chances are really good that you're already doing this in some way in your faith life too. But it is our call for sure to be disciple makers. And so, brothers and sisters, let us with joy go and take the commission that God has given us through Jesus Christ and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey God's commandments. And lo, Jesus will be with us to the end of the age. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for the opportunity to make disciples, to exercise the spiritual dis discipline of disciple making. Lord, let us not see it as a burden that we have to go out and do, but rather as an opportunity to live fully into the truth of who you have made us to be in Jesus Christ, that we get to make disciples. Lord, help us to talk and to love and to do. Help us to bring people along. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.